Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Botop Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. 33 songs I've handpicked that I wanted to talk about this week. So before we get into it, just a reminder, all the songs are in a Spotify link down below if you want to do that, as well as timestamps there. And also, if you want to hear the top 10 songs in actual audio format, rather than me just talking about them uh, short uh, is where we're doing that, YouTube shorts, and so go check that out as well. Um, so let's hop into it. 33 songs I wanted to talk about this week, and we're starting off in the bad category with Death Pact, uh, Dog in Me from the new Cypher 3 EP. Um, after a fairly strong record, this EP is just bad. Um, this track has no energy, no drive, really nothing going on for it. It's just kind of bad. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Then we've got Steve Aoki featuring Neo with Heavenly Hell from the new Paragon LP out now by Steve Aoki. Uh, first off, Neo's vocals are not it here. Uh, it seems like he's barely trying, and the actual lyricism here is kind of like basic fifth grade writing. Um, and the production from Steve Aoki here is kind of uh, like bare bones, simple electro pop beat. The melody is catchy, yeah, but overall, just a boring tune. Then we got Esky83 featuring Marielle with Run Alone. Uh, really boring drum and bass here, honestly. Uh, no real change in intensity or even vocals. It's just a linear, derivative, unnecessary track. And honestly, with the album art, um, this looks to be kind of the least effort uh, that uh, has been put into a Monster Cat track this year. Um, so I don't know. I just thought this one was really weird. And then we're moving into the meh category, songs that were uh, pretty meh, I thought. Uh, maybe you liked them more than me. Uh, we've got Griffin, Weathen, and Norma Jean Martin, uh, Mar Mer Martin, something like that, with Dance Through the Night, uh, the fourth single from an upcoming record. Uh, yes, and sadly, the most boring of the singles released up to this point. It's generic house with even more generic lyricism. Nothing to really grab onto or unique to separate this from the kind of thousands of other songs like this out there. Um, I'm kind of disappointed also how little influence Weathen had on this track, so... Then we got Milk with Mega from the new Take a Bite EP out now on Champo. Uh, yeah, a bit of an 8-bit throwback track here as this EP as a whole as well. Uh, with this track in particular leaning more towards uh, Glitch Hop, uh, even throwing in some kind of uh, like Pac-Man Waka Waka samples in there, which I thought were pretty fun. But um, the track, I think, in the end, though, does feel a little dated, I would say, uh, on the back end, so... Then we've got Fred V and Denmo featuring Paul Dowling with Collide from the new Luminous LP out now from Fred. Again, a ton of new EPs and albums came out this week, so check those out for sure. But yeah, this is kind of fairly average liquid drum and bass, I must say. Nothing bad about it, just kind of heard it before. Then we got Whipped Cream and BK with Real to Real for Me, I should say, from the new This Is Real or Is This Real EP uh, from Whipped Cream. Uh, yeah, driven deep house cut with meaty kicks and simple vocal chops. Um, it's a great tone setter for the EP. I just wish it had another movement to play around. And I think if there was a third part, I would have liked this a lot more. Then we've got Shingo Nakamura with Driving, a solid melodic house with kind of picture, picture-esque uh, city soundscape here. A neat track, but nothing over the moon. Um, there's a bunch more Shingo tracks I enjoy over this one, but uh, still a nice little track. Then we've got Before Sadaji and Andrew Spellman with Leave Me Alone, a dark and moody melodic house cover of Fred Again's track of the same name with Baby Keem, uh, Leave Me Alone. I like the more relaxed approach to this kind of pretty heady, like, original one, uh, but I do think the lyrical content from, the uh, like, the original track just doesn't really match the relatively low energy of this one. Um, also, these two, uh, Before Sadaji and Andrew Spellman, are half an orange, if you didn't realize that, so this is the, they're kind of two individual personas or aliases on, on one track, so this sort of is half an orange on the guava uh, label so hopefully that all makes sense but uh, then we got Rivo and Armin Van Buren featuring Sharon De Alden uh, De Adele sorry De Adele uh, Dan Adele and uh, yeah within and out of love fairly grand and cinematic progressive house here but it kind of loses that grandeur on the actual drops um, my favorite parts of this track are literally everything but the drops and I also thought Sharon's vocals uh, were okay for the most part then we got Club 909 with Promise. Uh, Club 909 is the new duo alias uh, from the mixed minds of DSAB and Affinity. Uh, so yeah, it appears to be a more uh, house-focused alias in particular, this one here. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty typical tech house track, uh, this one in particular, that reminds me a lot of Matroda's style, actually. And so one that I didn't mind, uh, but didn't think I was, uh, yeah, over the moon about. We got so fun with that's the way a high energy kind of carefree big beat DNB cut that is a uh, new style for so fun that I think works well. It's more cheerful and happy than their typical kind of rough and edgier sounds from the two of them. And uh, I think so fun could uh, could use some more production in this kind of area to to branch out their discography a little bit, their whole soundscape. So. 
They got Tritonal and Koala with From the Inside. Nice sounding progressive house that isn't really doing anything special in particular. Um, if house sounds great to you, if Tritonal sounds great to you, you're going to enjoy this. If those don't, if you don't really care about those two words I just said, don't bother with this one. Then we got Habstract and Young Martyr with Anita. Uh, Habstract getting his uh, brother Young Martyr here on the track for rap vocals is the kind of brotherly love that you like to see. Um, holistically, though, this track is kind of standard heavy bass house from Habstract with some funny lyricism from Young Martyr, I will say. Uh, but yeah, the track is just kind of a touch short and a bit same samey for Habstract's uh, holistic discography. So. Then we got Skybreak and Essinger with Mothman. Uh, for a Skybreak and Essinger track, I was, I would say, pretty underwhelmed. Um, there weren't really, really any big moments here or synth runs or like loud vocals that I was expecting from these two. Skybreak and Essinger often have these like big kind of grand explosive moments in their tracks. And this one just didn't really have a whole ton of that. And not that necessarily needs to every time from these two, but um, knowing what they could have done together, I was just expecting more of that from this track in particular. So yeah, it's a neat melodic bass tune, but one that I don't think I'm going to return to a whole bunch. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty good. We've got Petite Biscuit with Cruel Heart from the new Discipline LP out now. Um, yeah, just in the, as the last couple singles have been, Petite Biscuit is kind of doing this really unique thing structurally where the majority of the track is this kind of simplistic, like driven electro pop production only to kind of switch on a dime on the last 30 seconds and make this kind of future based synth wavy esque final 30 second movement um and that just sounds like the best part of the track for sure so you're waiting and waiting waiting for the kind of final movement so it's a formula that i think is working well and we'll just have to see how it sounds in the larger context of the record so then we've got Note Taker with All Night, a long six-minute atmospheric Electro House tune that is a uh, relatively linear song, I would say, for its length and what I've come to know from Note Taker. Um, I like the sound design and atmosphere of the track, but I just don't feel like it really went much of anywhere. But well, again, I really liked it. I just feel like it could have had an extra something. Then we have Nightmare and Big Gigantic with Back for More, the Darby remix in particular here. This is a quick two-minute remix that's got a bit of a minimalistic jungle vibe to it, which is a sound I have not heard in a long time. Uh, and it's easily danceable, fast-paced, and a really unique remix that I quite enjoyed way more than the original, I would say. We got Dactyl featuring and Julie with Shakti, a light electropop tune with a very intimate sound design and production that really feels um, like real and personable. Uh, whether it's kind of the chanting vocals or the quaint wooden elements that are interspliced all throughout, um, the song kind of exudes the feeling of of nature. I would say, and it's a nice little bit bird tune. Then we got Voge, Fool, and Azteca from, with Gravitation, uh, a very pure kind of synthwave track with a cinematic kind of atmosphere to it. And um, yeah, again, relatively tame production on this one, I would say. The tone and style of the track is great, but it is fairly cliche for a synthwave track. So, uh, But again, I think more than anything, the mixing and mastering was just fantastic, and that's why it's here and good. Then we got Flux Pavilion with Better Off. Uh, Flux Pavilion is continuing to branch out with the sound design, and this time it's kind of like a rigid pseudo tear out track. Um, it's not your typical kind of abrasive tear out that you kind of normally come to know and love for the most part if you like tear out, but um, it's a little bit more reserved and calm relative for tear out. Um, it's kind of a weird, like, I, I don't really know how to describe exactly. I hope I did a good job with that, but you got to go listen to this one for sure. It's definitely a unique one for Flux Pavilion and uh, one that I enjoyed quite a bit. Then we got Spaghetti with Revenge of the Meatballs from the Big Boil EP. Uh, other than this being the kind of musical equivalent of anime Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball, uh, this thing kind of slaps. Uh, it's Spaghetti's classic dubstep with sharp snares and jittery synths. It's got a story that's, yeah, a little silly, uh, but the song is kind of all gas, no breaks, and I enjoyed it. Then we got Mr. Fiji Ouija with Less Is More. Uh, despite what the title may be, uh, Fiji is utilizing um, some more kind of uh, unique production elements that we don't really hear from uh, Fiji all that much, which I think was very much inspired by uh, Fortet. It's almost like Fiji hadn't really heard Fortet before the song and then heard Fortet and then made this track um, as it's kind of this micro house future garage tone with, um, yeah, like big strings, soft drums and bouncy melodies. It's actually kind of a bit of a new kind of detour style for Fiji that I think is fantastic. I'd like to hear more of him take on the style. We've got Sullivan King with the beginning. Uh, drum and bass from Sullivan King with these big warped and distorted synths that actually hit hard. Um, this is one of the better tracks I think I've heard from Sullivan King as of late in the last little bit. I hadn't been super impressed with this stuff, but something about this just kind of hit in a way that I did not expect uh, in a certain style and tone for DNB that um, I don't think is super common nowadays, and I enjoyed it quite a bit.
Then we got Grabbits in the Dark uh, from the new three-track EP of the same name. It's dark, moody, punchy, and all with that kind of neat classic Grabbits uh, twinge to it. Um, it's got this kind of dense electronic synth sustains, but also a vocal performance that's often heard over a more uh, alternative R&B style of song. Um, this might be some of Grabbits' best melding of those two styles. He is very, very much has an electronic sound and like an alternative R&B sound, and this really does sound like those are those two are in perfect tandem here. So, great track. Then we got Matt Zoe with Kamikaze Cosworth. Uh, Matt Zoe brings us back to the heydays of Neurofunk with this track. Uh, the production here is super unique, as most of the drop elements are these kind of quick hits that don't linger all that much, uh, and there really isn't much happening in the background. So it just like is this really, um, it's it. I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like you hear it live. Like there's nothing else happening. It's just someone with a bunch of things right in front of them. They're hitting it with a bunch of different styles. It kind of makes it for a very uh, heavily raw percussion sound to it. And it's uh, one that works really, really well. So go listen to that. Then we've got Turquoise Death and Vrombotic with Glimmer, uh, yet another turquoise banger, uh, more atmospheric uh, drum and bass with this one. And yes, this is another track that isn't quite an easy or regular listen for a lot of uh, EDM fans out there, but is rich in sound design and mixing. And is definitely more of a kind of a critic style track, I would say. Then we got Saint Punk with Damned Station 3 is the other subtitle there. But uh, yeah, this is a grand cinematic bass house uh, tune with a screechy lead synth melody um, that in a vacuum I don't think is super pleasing, but works really well in tandem with the bass line. This is kind of just pure, great Saint Punk, and uh, I enjoyed it. Then we got If Found with The Rave. Uh, if Found is here with his now his second kind of rave-centric track that is a bit of a detour from his regular sound, I must say. Uh, but I think this is some of my kind of favorite sound of his. Um, it's got this that kind of big festival main stage vibe to it, but he's coming at it from the angle of a more niche artist um, that's not going for those streaming numbers, that's not just trying to have a big, fun sound. It actually is great. Um, you can just tell that there's so much more thought that goes into a main stage style track like this compared to many other like bigger artists out there. So really enjoy this one. Then we've got Snails and Chime with Arcane Ooze, a brilliant melding of two fairly opposing sound designers in the dubstep space specifically, with the kind of vomit of Snails and the color of Chime. Um, you've got three unique and interesting drops with a kind of micro drop in the middle. This is just an all-around really fun tune. Uh, and yes, another just absolutely great culmination of two very distinct styles into one that just works. And then we are moving into the standout category. We got three songs in standout that I want to talk about. Songs that are cut above the rest, in my opinion. Uh, we've got Icarus by Jaren. Uh, seriously loving Jaren stuff right now. It's glitchy, wonky. It's kind of a touch future based, touch color based, touch art pop. It's just such a fresh and unique sound that I don't really hear a ton of people doing right now. Uh, this track is covering, like, is, is feel like it's covered, I would say, in this like kind of blanket of bright sustains that kind of pull back for just a moment before the drop fully goes in um, to kind of give it this like, guttural uh, punch to it on the drop sections. And I just love it. Also love the vocal uh, chops a ton. Then we've got ISOXO, Knock 2, and RL Grime with Smack Talk, a huge hybrid trap collaboration from these three, alongside the first real official track of ISO Knock. Um, it's kind of heavy, dense. Its production is top tier. You've got these like really loud, layered, synthesized organ sounds for this eerie kind of intro, bridge, and outro sections. Um, and this track kind of just has it all. This is probably and will be potentially uh, my favorite trap song of the year. So it, it is fantastic. And at number one, my favorite song, and I will say project of the week, uh, was uh, Sizzy and Oswell, I would say, with Dope One from the Weight of the World album out now by Sizzy. I'll admit it, I'm sleeping on Sizzy. I've, I've been sleeping on Sizzy. This track and record as a whole are just fantastic. Um, this track in particular is a brilliant melding of modern electronic rhythm, uh, but uh, sorry, modern uh, melodic rhythm, but also a kind of love letter to the earlier sounds, electronic sounds that made EDM what it is today. Uh, this track is all over the place and in the best way possible. You're not really sure what you're going to get as you kind of just go from one movement to another and just kind of in surprise and awe with what has transpired throughout the track. Um, yeah, I I just I had a <laughs> smile on my face listening to the every each new section of this track. And so I think you should go listen to the uh, Sizzy album now because I was sleeping on it. So don't be like me. Go listen to it now. The album is incredible. But other than that, I've been Dakota from Botan Media. I'd love to hear what you have to say in any all comments in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in another video.